this really is a magical place and we really love to have our students be here and, and get to know what it really is like to be a teacher uh, and to learn about young children. In our child development program, we study early childhood education and in many classes you're reading about children and you're reading about teachers and teaching and working with families, but it's one thing to read about those topics and it's another thing to actually see it happening in real life and not only to see it happening but then to participate in it as well as um, as a student teacher or possibly an intern um, and even as an observer in the classroom there's so much you can learn about children from children and that's not something you can really take away from a lecture or or a textbook Actually, one of the main tenets of early childhood education practice is that children learn through doing. They learn through hands-on experience, and not just hands-on experience, but what we call minds-on experience, exciting, creative, engaging activities. But that kind of learning doesn't stop with children. We know actually that adults learn best when they find practical applications for what they're learning and when they can make meaning of the, the things they're learning about through their own experience. And so that's one thing that our program provides that we um, really love for our students to participate in. So we have our classrooms, we talk about um, in the adult classroom, we talk about early childhood practice, we talk about development, and then all we have to do is walk across the hall and we can actually see what it looks like in a classroom with real live young children. And in our particular program, we have children ages two up to age five, and every child is different. And so it's really um, wonderful to see the variation in ages. And in most of our classrooms, we have children in mixed age groupings, meaning in the same group, you might see two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, and five-year-olds together learning. And you'll notice that there is a difference between how a four-year-old approaches a painting activity and then the way a two-year-old approaches an eight, a, a painting activity. So it's wonderful to see them interact with each other and to actually see how they learn from each other. They're not just learning from the teachers in the classroom, but they're also learning uh, through their interactions. So another thing about learning that we study in our program is that learning is in most cases, most of the time, it's an interactive process. It's a so social process. Most people don't learn completely on their own. And so in our classrooms, our students see this happening with the children and the teachers as they explore ideas together and explore activities together. Um, but similarly, this happens for our adult students. When they come and they uh, work in one of our early childhood classrooms, they also get to benefit from being a part of a community of practice where there are many people, teachers and students, who are wanting to um, discuss what they're seeing, what they're noticing about the children, what they're noticing about themselves and their reactions to the children, and how do we work with those in meaningful ways to support, ultimately to support young children in their development. So this is a, a social engaging experience that ultimately promotes learning um, and, and really learning about a career, learning about the profession of early education and the many ways that people support young children in their development even beyond the classroom, so early intervention and even early mental health uh, services. So we offer a number of courses in our program. Uh, there are eight main courses that are a part of our early childhood education degree and um, main certificate. And some of those are more theoretical based where you're learning about research and theory that informs our work with young children. Um, anytime you are learning about the field of education, you're learning about what we call evidence-based practice. We don't just do what we want to do with children because we think it's a good idea or because we remember doing it when we were a kid, but in fact we read and study these um, research outcomes and theories and then we apply those to the activities and the ways we inter interact with children in the classroom. 
So beyond the theoretical courses, we also have what I would call practical courses. And these have to do with developing curriculum for children, um, engaging with children around their behaviors, because oftentimes adults aren't quite sure what to do when a child um, doesn't behave the way we want them to. Uh, so that's an important area of learning that we, that we learn about and practice. Um, we also learn about classroom organization, classroom setup. We learn about making sure our classrooms are culturally responsive and anti-racist. So we are making sure that the materials we provide for children are inclusive, that they're learning about not only themselves, but about other people um, in their communities and learning about other people that may not even be present in their classroom, but that these are people that they might encounter at some point in their lives or when they and when they move on to uh, a larger school learning is not just teaching somebody facts learning is really about discovering and for young children we set up our environments to promote discovery we aren't just sitting children down and trying to fill them up with knowledge, tell them everything we know. And so actually teaching in early education looks kind of different. Uh, we think our teachers are more facilitators of learning. They might ask questions, they bring in exciting, interesting materials for children to explore and to problem solve around. And um, also, we want our adult students to do the same thing as much as possible. Obviously there is more book learning when you are an adult college student, but on the other hand, there are also important areas of learning that you can't really learn from somebody else. You have to figure it out yourself. You have to discover how, how do I mix paints the right way? Or how do, I pr uh, how do I offer paints then to children in a way that it's gonna be the most beneficial to them? Or how do I create a science experience that children are gonna learn from and not just memorize a fact, but actually learn um, an important idea, an important scientific idea. So we hope that we set up our program so that students, adult students, and our young children's students are always engaged in discovery and problem solving and really think and creativity, coming up with ideas that then we can help them um, pursue and, um, and figure out the learning that comes from those ideas as well. So here at Moore Park College, our education program, early education program, is really about supporting not just the child, but also the college student and helping them to understand the way learning happens in early education, mostly happens through play. And so they're learning just about how magnificent play is and how it supports all aspects of human development and helps, this helps our college students to be successful, but ultimately this helps them to help children to be successful in their growth and development. One other thing for students to know and our community to know is that it's not only the faculty in our program that are supporting the, the students and supporting their learning, but it's all the staff in our child development lab who are also supporting students and, and their learning. And in fact, many of the relationships that our students develop with their lab teachers continue throughout the years. And our lab teachers are often the people that they first will write to if they have a problem once they're out in the field as teachers themselves or when they've transferred and they're writing a paper and they're not sure quite what to say about something, they will oftentimes first resort be going to these magnificent teachers that they have worked with side by side in our child development lab. So for students that would like to have experience working with young children, we applaud that first of all. The more experience you can get, the more successful you're likely to be once you're working in a classroom as a teacher. And so in some of our courses, in our observation and assessment course, and in our student teaching course, this is built in. Uh, a portion of that class is dedicated to the student going into the classroom and learning uh, alongside the teachers, alongside the children. Beyond that, we oftentimes have students that want to expand their knowledge even more, get more experience. So they have a few options as well. They can take internship classes and they can be placed here in our program and get more hours of experience that counts towards their clinical experience that's required 
for a child development permit. And also they can, once they've taken at least 12 units, they can apply to be student workers here in our program. And this is another valuable way to expand their experience um, that they can bring with them once they transfer and once they get a job out in the field. Yeah. Throughout the halls of our building, you'll notice that we have a lot of these bulletin boards and on these boards are documentation panels that both our students and our staff have created to help other students and the families and members of the community who come into our program to help them understand just what happens in our classrooms. We want to also make sure that our families are represented in our classrooms and our families feel welcomed. So in every one of our rooms you'll see in some way that we've incorporated photographs of the family. So here we've got a photo board of the children and, and their families and in other classrooms you will see, you will see similar displays. So every one of our children's classrooms, we have five by the way, every one of our classrooms has an observation room and many students use these rooms to do homework assignments that they've been assigned in their various classes to observe an early childhood program. These are one-way windows so the adults can see in, the students can see in the classroom, but when the children are in the classroom they cannot see who's in the observation room. So. Um, that means that adults are just seeing children's uh, work and play in its natural uh, state. The beauty of the observation rooms is that um, the student doesn't actually have to go in the classroom and potentially disrupt what's happening in, in, um, in the children's activities. All of our children sign in when they come in in the morning because their parents also sign them in because that's a legal requirement, but we know that it's actually a learning opportunity for our children who might want to write their names as well, so we have sign-in sheets for all the children. This is one of our mixed age preschool classrooms. So you'll have some older two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, and at this time of the school year, um, even some five-year-olds. And every classroom has some common features. For example, every classroom will have an art center. Every classroom will have a dramatic play center. Every classroom has a, a book area and a science area, for example, but Every classroom is different because the teachers set up their classroom to reflect the people who use that room. So to reflect the children in that particular classroom and their interests and also to reflect the teachers themselves and, and some of their interests that they're bringing to the children. This is our light table and the light serves as some inspiration for children to come and explore whatever we have set out on the table. A lot of times they are exploring with color because when you put these colorful objects on the light table it there's there's a different uh, view there's a they'll get a different perspective on the various colors plus there's wonderful materials that the children use for for building like you might see um, in the block center as well you'll notice in our classrooms that almost all the items if they're intended for children they're at the children's level so for example, this spot here where the children are engaged in sensory play has a table that's a children's height. So they can kneel, they can sit on the floor, they can um, engage with this uh, lovely sand and, and play in a way that's comfortable for them. We really like to point to Yoga Mama as one of our success stories in that she's taken her early childhood training and combined it with her love her passion for yoga and she's created this program that she's used throughout the community doing yoga with young children in what we would call a developmentally appropriate way. So this is um, another one of our classrooms, the uh, Jacaranda room and right now we have some children in here. It's just before lunch and some of them are working on building and others of them are working uh, in the art area. As I mentioned in the other classroom that we sometimes change our dramatic play to reflect children's interests. You can see in this classroom that the children created in their loft area a spaceship that they can um, play like they're astronauts. In all of our classrooms we also invite children to explore music, rhythm, and, um, and to 
move to the music, dance, and uh, we have quite a few instruments that we have out on a regular basis that the children can, um, can ex explore with. And sometimes we use them during planned group times with the children, and other times the children are just freely choosing to, uh, to use them uh, to create their own music. A really important part of early learning um, is around language and literacy. And when you walk into our classrooms, you won't see children um, being shown flashcards and asking them what letter this is, or being um, made to uh, copy letters and, and words, but we do a lot of engagement around words. So for example, uh, on this wall here, we've asked children to tell us their stories and we've posted them on the wall. They've drawn pictures that go along with their stories, which is also another important early symbolic language, drawing with pictures and sharing our ideas creatively. And in addition to that, we also have, for every child, a journal. This is yours right here, isn't it, Gigi? <laughs> And so the children can also do some dictation of stories and then they uh, draw pictures with it. So that in this case, the teacher wrote down Gigi's story. And then Gigi did a little bit of her own writing over here too, huh? So when you walk into any of our classrooms, what you need to know is that all these areas have been set up intentionally, meaning there's a learning purpose behind every material that's there, every activity that's been planned, and, and it's important to know this because when you watch children playing, it's easy to just dismiss it and think nothing is happening, but in fact through the play that the teachers have set up or facilitated by creating these wonderful engaging environments, we are supporting children's learning and development. Our child development building was built to support not just children's learning, but adults learning as well. So we have two adult classrooms, two college classrooms in our um, program building here and what's really lovely is that we can engage in conversation and activities around learning about young children but then we can just walk right across the hall and we can look for examples, uh, real life examples with the children in the classrooms.